Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis on this beautiful Sunday morning as we celebrate uh, the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday. It is good to see all of you. Um, just a couple of pastoral notes before we begin the liturgy today. I wanted to let you all know that a uh, longtime parishioner and dear friend of many of you, Steve Merrick, died on Friday morning. Uh, I don't know yet what uh, arrangements there will be for a service, but uh, please keep Becky in your prayers, and uh, and we give thanks for Steve and his life and his and, and his presence here at St. Francis. Um, it's I know it's been a while since he's been here, but um, but we have kept him in in our prayers for a long time. Uh, we also continue to pray for uh, Mary Hartley's son-in-law Mark Yakota, who uh, is gravely ill. Um, but Mary is with him and uh, surrounded by family, so please keep Mark and uh, Jill and their whole family in your prayers as well. Uh, we now will start the service today. This is the, the, uh, a wonderful and unusual service in that, that I'm going to invite you all now to get up off your seated position and come and join us in the narthex for the uh, for the Palm Sunday liturgy uh, know that when we when we come back into the church we come back in singing and waving palms so make sure everybody gets a palm before you come in and you can wave it uh, as as we come uh, and just find your seat and be seated um, uh, at the at the conclusion of the hymn uh, the other thing uh, concerning the Passion narrative, when we come to that, uh, it takes the place of the Gospel this morning, uh, and uh, Tyler, I think, will remind you to be seated after the sequence hymn, and then we will stand, as the tradition is, at the mention of Golgotha uh, during the, you'll, you'll, I'll give you the cue as to when to stand, but uh, you'll stay seated for most of the liturgy. So let's go to the narthex now. Don't take it personally, everybody else is coming out to me. In this, uh, in this opening liturgy, you will see the words of the congregation all alternately uh, uh, printed in italics and then sometimes in bold. So if it's bold or in italics, that's you. And uh, so please, uh, please speak those lines with great conviction and indeed fervor when that's called for. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in Christ. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. 
A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be in the It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Does everybody have one? No. Okay. We have big ones. Ah. Okay. He needs a big one. Eh? Okay?
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my eye is I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. May they face the shine upon this earth, and may your loving kindness A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not, re did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand and turn to hymn 156 in your hymnal as we sing together. is the passion according to Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl will me, with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to have not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, 
You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. All right. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of his flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all have become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die for you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay, with, stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will send at once more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? But say it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scripture of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, Two came forward and said, 
This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves, he deserves death. death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus to Galilee. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he came, went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This, this, this man is this Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, Peter. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crowed, he will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 piece of silver to the chief priests and elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is, what is that, that to us? us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bar bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of, some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You Jesus said, so. You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, 
Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly! This man Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man for Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene 
and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember, remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.
Prayers of the People The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So let us cry out to the Lord, saying, Crucified King, have mercy on us. Have mercy on your church, O Lord, for the times we have denied you, we have not been humble as you are humble. We have been unwilling to share the gospel with our friends and families. Crucified King, have, have mercy, mercy on us. <clears throat> have mercy on those who hold authority in the nations of the world, O Lord, especially those who are threatened by your message of love and justice. Have mercy on us for our silence and complicity. Crucified King, have mercy on us. Have mercy on those of us who are called to be stewards of your creation, O Lord. We have exploited and mistreated your masterpiece. Have mercy on us and teach us to love what you have called good. Crucified King, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Teach us to value what you value. Increase in us love for our neighbors. Crucified King, have mercy on us. <clears throat> have mercy on all who are sick and suffering, especially Arthur, Mary Boyd, Bill Casal, Cynthia, Father Brent, Charles Farinelli, Debbie Jones, Joanne Creston, Mark, Liz Mathewson, Lorelai McKinnon, Jim Phillips, Susan Reddy, Susie, Margaret Smith, Marshall Smith, Carolyn Taylor, Persis Williams, and Mark Yakota. O Lord, strengthen those whose strength fails them. Comfort and care for those wasted with grief. Make your face shine upon your servants. Crucified King, have mercy on us. Merciful Lord, you know the pain of death, even death on a cross. Have mercy on the dying and the dead. Bring them to the joy of everlasting life. Specifically, we pray for Steve Merrick, who has died. Crucified King, have mercy on us. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Lindsley Deckrow, Richard Brown, and Jack Joyce. Crucified King, have mercy on us. We pray for those who serve in the armed services, especially Abigail, Kyle Carino Mings, James Crow III, and Kevin West. Crucified King, have mercy on us. You are invited to add any additional intercessions at this time, either silently or aloud. Crucified King, have mercy on us. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for those who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. <laughs>
Standing, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may God bless you with the gift of tears to share with those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of all that they cherish, so that you may reach out your hands to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifying Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning again. And Congratulations on liturgy well done today, people of St. Francis. Uh, thank you for all of the readers uh, who did such a wonderful job, to the choir who led from, in a variety of capacities this morning, but especially for that beautiful anthem, really well sung, friends, and that was, that was great. Uh, to Lorna on the organ and Carlson directing it all, thank you both so much. We are blessed by your ministries, Sunday after Sunday. Um, there are, this of course is Holy Week, it begins today, uh, continuing on Thursday with the Monday Thursday liturgy uh, that includes the opportunity to both wash and have your feet washed if you so choose, but you can come to Monday Thursday and not choose to do either one of those things, that's perfectly fine, but it is a powerful liturgy, uh, of course, that include, concludes with the stripping of the altar, and this year, uh, the washing of the altar uh, is also included. And then we continue on Good Friday with the opportunity to go and be with our friends from the Congregational Church to walk the Stations of the Cross uh, at noon. And then back here at 7 o'clock for our own Good Friday liturgy, we will be joined by some friends from the Congregational Church. Lisa Durkee will be preaching that evening. Um, on Saturday evening at 7, it's the queen of the liturgies, as we, th those of us who love liturgy say, this is the, this is the high point of the whole year, uh, so I do hope you'll come if you're at all able. I, I always say, and I, I don't really say this out loud, but, and if you tell people that I said this, I will deny it vehemently, <laughs> but I always say the true Christians come to Easter on Easter Vigil, and leave Sunday morning for the people who only come to church once a year. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> Easter Vigil is a great, is a great service, and I uh, hope you'll be able to be here with us for that. Uh, we have a new Paschal candle and a new Paschal candle stand that we will also use for the first time on that night. So good reasons to be in church. And then Easter Day, yes, we will gather next Sunday to celebrate the Lord's resurrection, and we will have a festive coffee hour afterwards. If you're able to help with the coffee hour, please see either Fred or Prudy with that. Um, it seems like there was one other announcement that I wanted to make. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Marty wanted me to remind you that those of you who ordered Easter baskets, even though it's not Easter yet, it's, uh, your Easter baskets are here today, so please come downstairs and pick yours up uh, if you ordered one, and uh, so that Marty doesn't have to cart them around for the rest of the week. Any other announcements for the good of the whole? If not, we will stand and sing our closing hymn, O Sacred Head, Sore Wounded, Hymn 168.
Father, let's go forth in the name of Christ.